made that. She said, fine, be shook on that. And she said, just call me tomorrow at work, and uh, we'll arrange for you to go over to the warehouse and pick them up. I thought, oh, this is great. So at the time, I was chairman of the department. I was in there at 8 o'clock the next morning, and uh, there was already a phone call for me. She was on the phone. She was over at 191 Peach Street, which they were just building at that time. She said, I've got a problem. Said, Many of the men went home last night, and they happened to talk about Wilbur Kurtz and some art dealers, and others found out about it. And I've been offered many, many, much more, uh, several times, what we shook on last night. Although the figure she had given me was based on an appraisal done by a bucket art dealer. So she said to me, but we shook on that last night. I thought, that is so, that is so Southern. That honor, you know, we had a verbal agreement last night. This could not have taken place in New York or Boston, forget it. So she said to me, we, uh, we had that deal last night, and uh, so uh, my, my boss is asking you to, to, uh, to, to come up with the money. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll come over and see you this afternoon. She said, he wants it right now. I live, in, New York. I live in, the, yeah. in, the, in the city of Decatur. I went over, I had my car with me that day, went over to the parking garage. I got my unicycle and I went home and got my car as fast as I could and I was able to complete the deal with her and then take possession of these two paintings which I've had in my home now for about 20 years and one of which is now on exhibit at the Wilbur Kurtz exhibit in, uh, in Marietta, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on. So that's how I came to write the book on Wilbur Kurtz, having these two paintings in my home for all these years, the last 20 years. On the cover of the book, we see the Governor's Mansion, Milledgeville. Two versions of it. This is the original version of Governor's Mansion, Milledgeville. Kurtz started painting it in 1938. He was working for the, uh, for the federal government under one of the Roosevelt uh, plans, and he started the painting because his supervisor said to him, well, this is the centenary of the governor's mansion in Milledgeville. Why don't you make a painting of it? So he started work on that in 1938. But then other things were happening in his life. As he had hoped, a, a contract came through from David O. Selznick in Hollywood, and he shipped out. He went to Hollywood to work on the movie for the next year until December 1939. So he left the painting at home in his studio. He went to California around Thanksgiving time. His wife joined him at Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, a month later, and they stayed there in Hollywood for a year, both working on, uh, as advisors, on uh, Gone with the Wind. After he got there, he said to himself, I, I still, I want to finish that painting. The painting was unfinished. It was still at home in Atlanta. He wrote to his son, he asked his son to pack it up and send it out to California. Selznick rents a private estate area called Bush Gardens. It was a fancy residential area where people had large homes, but there was a, a large uh, wooded area that belonged to all the shareholders in these mansions called Bush Gardens. And Selznick rented it for two days to film the barbecue scene. So Kurtz is right there watching these scenes being filmed. And the barbecue scene ends with news coming from Charleston about the shots fired there and Ashley getting on his horse and riding off to Virginia. A light bulb went off in Kurtz's mind. He said to himself, that's it. And so he painted Ashley and Melanie into his painting. Until that time, he just had the governor's mansion. He decided to paint Ashley and Melanie into the painting. After he got it done, the 1st of April, he shipped it back to the governor, uh, the governor of uh, Governor Rivers in uh, Atlanta. And the press got a wind of it, and it became the Gone with the Wind painting. It's been exhibited in the governor's mansion ever since. It's prominently exhibited. Last December 2013, this book was finished in uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, December 2012. The book came out in October 2013. Christmas time, 2012, went over at Christmas time to visit the governor's mansion, and First Lady Sandra Deal was visiting that day, and she said, she's a very gracious individual. I told her that I wanted to see the painting, if that was at all possible, since I was working on this book on Wilbur Kurtz. 
Well, she put me, uh, uh, teamed me up with her personal assistant, and I was allowed to go see the painting. And she told me a story that when Governor Deal first came into the uh, governor's mansion, he inherited a situation where the painting was upstairs in the governor's private office on the second floor. And a number of governors have been doing that for the last 15 years or so, keeping the painting all to themselves. She told me she pestered him for his first two years in office to get that painting out of there and bring it downstairs where visitors to the mansion could see it. And now it's exhibited in the basement, which is where the huge ballroom is located, and it's in an elevated position behind the dais so that everyone who takes the tour can see this painting, which dominates the whole room. It's about eight feet by five and a half feet. It's beautiful. Later on in the 60s, Kurtz made a number of copies of it, 32 inches by 22 inches. And uh, these were done for various political individuals, governors, governors' wives. And one was made by, uh, one was made for uh, Mrs. Betty Vandiver, wife of Governor Vandiver. And uh, as she told me and Russ the story, we visited her in her home last month. And the way she tells the story is her husband and a couple other Georgia politicians were invited in 1964 to go visit LBJ. And he said to her, what the heck can I bring LBJ? He's a man who's got everything. She said, why don't you let, just bring that painting out there and give it to him, which she did. So she brought the painting out and she gave it to LBJ because he had said on a visit to Georgia that he, he didn't have any artwork from Georgia. So she thought this would be a nice gesture. She then, in turn, commissioned Kurtz to do another one for her, for her home. Well, that painting went to Georgia, it belonged to LBJ and his family for many, many years. And then recently, after Lady Bird died, her possessions were, uh, were broken up. And that painting was passed on to someone who had worked for her for many years. It surfaced on eBay recently, and I'm happy to say that uh, Wilbur Kurtz corrector, Russell Clayton, who's here today, managed to nab that painting and bring it back to Georgia where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess we can start, we can start the show after stories. Kurtz was a historical painter in a traditional sense. Historical painters treated scenes from the Bible or from ancient history or past history based on either eyewitness evidence or something that they had seen in books. And I'll just show you two classic examples in American painting history of what uh, we would call historical paintings. This is a famous painting by American 